This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is Tuesday, June 9th, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. We've been pouring more and more resources into our police forces for 30, 40, 50 years, and we're not any safer than we were before. Calls to defund the police are growing louder as protests against police brutality continue. We're live this morning with what those calls mean. Anytime we have uh, social unrest, anytime things deviate from the norm and people start being concerned about their personal safety. As civil unrest and the coronavirus pandemic continue, Hoosiers are fearing for their safety. This morning, Call 6 Investigates looks at the option most Hoosiers are turning to. Managing as, as best we can, you know, only get what we need, you know, for the week. That's how we do it. And then that's just, that's how we get by. We're committed to providing you resources to rebound from the coronavirus pandemic. This morning, how Hoosiers in the hospitality industry are keeping their spirits alive despite the struggle to stay afloat. And it is six o'clock. Thanks for joining our team here on Good Morning Indiana. It is six o'clock on your Tuesday morning and Rafael Sanchez is down in Johnson County. What's happening in your neighborhood, Raf? So listen, don't be deceived because as I look outside of my living room window, I see a beautiful sunrise <laughs> emerging, but Todd Clawson is going to tell us that there's a lot of change on the horizon as this is a Storm Team 6 alert day. Todd, fill us in. Yeah, Raphael, you can see the sunrise behind me as well as you look on the RTV Weather Now camera from downtown to the north, and it's a beautiful sunrise, as you mentioned, taking place. Just some high, thin clouds uh, across the area. These clouds, though, will continue to increase, and eventually, once we get to this afternoon. That's when we're going to run into the potential for some strong to severe storms and even the threat of a few isolated tornadoes as well. But again, it's pretty quiet this morning with 60s and 70s temperature wise. The humidity has come way up. You'll notice that as you walk out the door if you haven't done so already this morning. But here are the clouds. No precipitation across central Indiana. We will wait on some of the showers and storms that are down in Tennessee to lift to the north. And the arrival again comes in during the afternoon hours with some strong to severe storms coming through. I'd say anytime between about two and eight o'clock will be under the threat of these severe storms. Outside of the storm threat though, you'll also notice the wind come up. Wind advisories are posted across parts of the area already. We'll talk more about the wind and these storms for you coming up in more detail in just a few minutes. But right now at 6.02, let's get you updated on the roadways, Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you. Here's a look right now south of the downtown area at I-65. A view here near Keystone Avenue and that major construction project project ongoing in that area. Crews were even out there early this morning working on the interstate and the bridge there. So be prepared to shift if you're traveling northbound Two big curves there and then southbound traffic restricted down to just those two lanes. So use caution. The exit ramps remain open. We'll keep you updated on any crashes or delays. Raphael. The time now is 6.03 here on Good Morning Indiana after an 11th day of protest in downtown Indianapolis. An investigation is now underway as to why a van hit a group of protesters on Monument Circles. Monument Circle. Here's the details as we know them. Video from the scene shows that protesters jumping on the hood of the vehicle, which continues to move forward. A few protesters were hit, but none appeared to be hurt. Police say a window of the van was broken, and it's not clear if it happened before or after it hit protesters. The police say the driver of the van is cooperating with the investigation. Protesters across the country are calling on cities to defund the police. But what does that mean and how could it impact you? Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning and working for you with those answers. Alyssa, this doesn't mean eliminate police departments completely. That's right, Meredith, and it really depends on who you talk to. The protesters we've spoken with and the experts we spoke with say it's not about eliminating those police departments. That's not the message. The message is defunding police departments and reallocating the funding in police budgets to other programming across the city that could be helpful to the people who live here. Now, those who want to see the police department defunded would like to see the money put towards other city-provided programming, addressing mental health issues and homelessness and education. On Sunday, a majority of Minneapolis's city county council members agreed that they would be defunding the city's police department, saying they would divert those funds towards a community-based safety model. Now, specific details have not come out on what that would look like.
have been pouring more and more resources into our police forces for 30, 40, 50 years. And we're not any safer than we were before. Here in Indianapolis, City County Councilor Allie Brown says she received close to 400 emails this week about defunding the Indianapolis Metro Police Department. And last year's budget included an increase in funding for the Indianapolis Metro Police Department, including a $1.2 million increase in funding specifically for body cameras. Now the council starts the process of reviewing their annual budget in August, and they say they are going to be looking over those public safety measures, and they, they also say that these uh, meetings will be open to the public. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. A call six investigates has uncovered new information that shows that a growing number of Hoosiers are getting a license to carry a gun. In the first quarter of 2020, Indiana State Police approved 16,020 gun licenses. That's a 20% increase compared to the same time period last year and a 35% increase compared to 2019. Now, experts say uncertainty surrounding COVID-19 is a big factor. Gun stores have also seen sales spike in the last few weeks following vandalism and burglaries of downtown businesses. Guy Relford says that his training class on Indiana gun laws is sold out. And we sold it out in uh, in about 36 hours, and and so it, it went it went really fast. It was it was a bit of a surprise, but I think it fits directly in with the topic, Kara, and that is that people really uh, not only want to have the ability to defend themselves, but want to understand what the rules are. They want to stay on the right side of the law. The group Moms Demand Action for Commons. Sense gun laws in America is urging training for anyone with a gun. In a statement to RTV6, they tell us in their own words, the reality is whenever guns are present, the risk of gun violence, including unintentional shootings, is too. Plus, the increase in gun sales not only makes the gun lobby richer, but it also raises concerns about children who are in the homes where these guns are all too often unsecured, as well as in the homes of domestic abuse. The time right now is 6.07. New from overnight, a woman is dead after a shooting on Indy's northwest side. This happened around 12.30 this morning at a home on West 33rd Street near I-65. Police found the victim inside and pronounced her dead at the scene. This morning, police say they've taken a man into custody as a suspect. Investigators believe the shooting was a domestic-related incident. And this morning, Bloomington police, they need your help to find a man who's wanted for a weekend murder. Come take a good look at your screen right now. Police say Dewan Kelly shot and killed a man at a gas station near North Walnut Street and State Road 46. Early Saturday morning, officers found the 39-year-old victim in the car with a gunshot wound to the neck. If you know anything about where Dewan Kelly might be, please call 911. The Indianapolis City County Council is giving the final approval to plan to build a new family center in Broad Ripple Park. When we last talked to the Parks Department about this project in March, it was set to include a gym, track, fitness area, community space, and primary care health facilities. Some residents have tried to fight the new center, arguing that there are other vacant locations to use for a new clinic. In March, Indy Parks told us a partnership with Community Health would help fund the multi-million dollar project. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on Hoosier families. 2,135 people in Indiana have died from COVID-19. That's according to Monday's update. 14 newly reported deaths happened between May the 18th and just yesterday. More than 309,000 people have, tested, have been tested for the virus in our state. Just over 12% have tested positive. The Indianapolis City County Council, they approved a bill allocating $76 million in COVID-19 relief. $20 million will go toward testing and contact tracing. $15 million to help with rental assistance for people impacted economically. $3 million to buy and distribute face masks and $1.8 million to help support food agencies. You can find a detailed list on how this funding will be spent by opening this story 
in the RTV6 app. This morning, as more things start to open up, the BMV is also preparing to return to normal operations. On Monday, June 15th, the BMV will resume walk-in service while continuing to accept a limited number of appointments. You'll be able to complete all the transactions needed in a branch with the exception of the driving skills exams. This morning, there's still no date on when the driving exams will resume. A limited number of people will be allowed inside at one time. A local nonprofit that helps thousands of Hoosier kids needs your help this morning. The Assistance League of Indianapolis can no longer operate in the building they're in. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us this morning with the details on how you could potentially help. The Assistance League of Indianapolis serves more than 3,500 kids every single year, giving them hygiene kits, clothes, shoes, and coats. But now they need a new space to live, and they're asking for your help. Right now, the nonprofit operates out of Forest Manor Professional Development Center. Recently, the building was sold to another nonprofit. The new owner offered the ALI a space to use, but they say it just isn't big enough for everything they need. They have several different programs, Alley Bears, Alley Friends, Assault Survival Kits, and their biggest program, Operation School Bell. In the program, they serve thousands of kids, helping them to have new clothes and hygiene products every year. It's just very important. I know that this um, ministry will be needed even more after this virus. Um, I think it's just very important that these kids feel really good about themselves when they have new clothes. When the kids come in to get their new clothes, they get to shop one-on-one -on -one with a volunteer and make sure all the clothes fit and they are styles they like. They are looking for a space approximately 12 to 15,000 square feet to operate in. If you know of a place like that that they can utilize, head over to theindiechannel.com for information on how to reach them. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. All right, thank you there, Kelsey. The time now is 6-11. We're tracking rain coming into central Indiana as the day progresses. Not much out there right now. In fact, we have sunshine. It's a quiet start to the day, but the wind will pick up today and those storm chances as you see as the remnants of Cristobal makes its way into central Indiana. We'll talk about the impact and the timing for you coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 6-12. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes. Appointment at select stores or at mybobs.com. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. The time right now is 614 on your Tuesday. This is a live look at I-70 near the Sam Jones Expressway, where we do have the eastbound lane still closed for that major in-dot construction project. It's closed between Ronald Reagan Parkway and the South Split downtown. The collector ramp to 465 remains open, however, as a detour route, and this project is expected to wrap up on June 28th at RTV6 to provide you with resources available to get you through and beyond the pandemic. And Meredith, as you know, here at RTV6, we are following six out of 83,000 people that make up the hospitality industry. And they have been among the hardest hit with conventions and big events canceled throughout central Indiana. This morning, the struggle and the spirit to survive. With the city of Indianapolis reopening, canceled conventions are impacting thousands of those who work in restaurants or hotels. Felicia Barner works with Crystal Catering at the Indiana Roof Ballroom. Lauren and I saw her last on March 11th while hosting the Rose Awards, which celebrates those who work in the hospitality industry. Luckily, Felicia's employer is paying her through a loan it obtained from the Paycheck Protection Program. Just pretty much managing as, as best we can, you know, only get what we need, you know, for the week. That's how we do it. And then that's just, that's how we get by. Appreciate what you're doing. Johnny Myers is a co-worker. Out of the blue, he mentioned hiring Hoosiers. The RTV6 commitment connecting people to jobs. Without being asked or prompted, he says he often shares the jobs that he sees posted on our newscasts with his friends. And it's about love, compassion, helping people out, things that Channel 6 does. You're very compassionate. I love, I love the station, how y'all do things. You're going out, getting people opportunities, jobs, making things happen. Johnny appreciated the box of food his bosses provided at the height of the pandemic. On the job, Johnny Myers is also known as Johnny Love. And this moment shows why. Everybody loves, everybody wants to be loved. 
you know. And then when everybody started loving, good things come out of love, you know. From whatever you're going through, if somebody shows some compassionate love, it makes a better day. And we all love Johnny Love. Employees of Crystal Catering are being paid over seven weeks from a loan that they received through the federal Paycheck Protection Program, Meredith. Uh, Raphael, you were telling me, though, that you've been hearing from people in other industries that are frustrated with PPP. Yes, yeah, so they're happy that they have a job, but they're frustrated that they're getting paid through the PPP program because in many cases, they're just getting their regular paycheck. While in some cases, people receiving unemployment are earning much more money than they would normally get if they were working. And that's because, as you may recall, the feds are kicking in that extra $600 a week all the way through July. People on PPP, they don't get the extra $600. So there is that frustration. But again, we'll see what happens as the weeks come along. It is now uh, 618. It is now time to check your forecast on the Storm Team 6 Alert Day. And Todd, you have a full plate ahead for yeah, us. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Not so much right now, Raphael. As you mentioned earlier, you looked out your window and it looked just fine. And as you look on the RTV uh, Weather Now cameras across central Indiana, you see the sun. So what's all this talk about severe weather and windy conditions? Well, it's all going to ramp up throughout the course of the morning hours. And then the crescendo is probably going to be mid-afternoon into the early evening hours with these storms making their way into central Indiana. So it's a process. It's not an immediate threat here this morning, but we're really in alert mode for this afternoon as wind gusts could get up to about 50 miles per hour. The mentioned the threat of severe weather, and that does include the possibility of a few isolated tornadoes. Here are wind gusts. Notice how they ramp up by the time we get into early afternoon. We're talking about wind gusts between about 20 and 40 miles per hour. I think the further off to the west you are, a little closer to the center of uh, the tropical system that's near St. Lewis, that is where uh, you're going to have the higher wind gusts. The further east you go, the wind gusts probably not quite as strong, and that's why the wind advisory is in western Indiana. Uh, but nonetheless, this wind speeds here are enough to cause uh, some damage across central Indiana, maybe even some power outages as we work our way into the evening and overnight hours, because the wind will be with us through overnight into Wednesday morning. In fact, here are some of the stronger wind gusts as we get into 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and then they'll slowly start to subside. So the wind is something that everybody's going to deal with no matter where you are across central Indiana to some extent as the day progresses. As far as the rainfall goes and the potential of severe weather, the severe threat's a little more on an isolated basis. It's not widespread, but what we'll wait on is some of these bands of heavier rainfall on the eastern side of this system to start to make its way into our area. The heavier rainfall, the flooding concerns, that will be off to our west. We don't have to worry about that as these bands will move through pretty quickly, so that will limit the flood potential but here we are two o'clock this afternoon some of these isolated storms starting to flare up across uh, the area and then by the time we get to six seven o'clock things are going to start to wind down so it's a quick window here for the potential of uh, the severe storms as they come through but nonetheless it is there a slight risk for most of central indiana the area you see in yellow from the storm prediction center highlighting the increased potential of severe weather by far the biggest threat is going to be the wind not only within the storms but outside side of the storms. Tornado threat medium here today. Not really too concerned about the potential for hail as these storms move in. We should be just fine with just increasing clouds and wind gusts as we get into the noon hour. Your highs today, a very muggy 87 to 88 degrees once we're past today. A few more storms tomorrow as the cold front goes through, but then a beautiful stretch of weather, Lauren, Thursday all the way into next week with more comfortable temperatures, lots of sunshine and low humidity. All right, Todd, thank you. Here is a live look right now at traffic. This is I-74 and Post Road over on the southeast side of town. Traffic is moving along up to speed as you can see both eastbound and westbound. No delays to slow you down. Of course, we'll keep you updated. Raphael. The road to a new school year, Lauren, could be a little bumpy. New research out this morning shows that giving is giving some food to thought to school districts as they plan and prepare to open for the school in the fall. The New York Times now reporting that most students will be behind when school starts back up in the new school year. Researchers say the achievement gap will be even wider in poor school districts where students have not had access to reliable technology. One study estimates that the average student will have lost about a third of their progress from reading and about a half in mathematics.
Several airports are experimenting with using technology to increase social distancing. In Tokyo, they're testing out these driverless chairs. They can help people get around who have mobility issues without needing an attendant to push. They work a lot like motorized wheelchairs, except these run on pre-programmed routes. The chairs can react to their surroundings to avoid crashes. The maker has tested the chairs at several airports, including JFK in New York. Well, have you cut the cord to save money? If so, you're not alone, but you also know that those streaming apps, they can add up. New at 627, we're looking at the free streaming options so you don't waste your money. We'll be right back. Here at 625, a lot of people have been talking about the baby boom that's expected <laughs> once the pandemic <laughs> is over. Well, the Paris Zoo, they already have that oh. baby boom going on. Okay. Look at these cute little critters. <laughs> the zoo reopened yesterday and they have 62 new residents. Wow. Baby baboons, humble penguins, flamingos, ring-tailed lemurs. They were all born at the zoo during its three-month closure. Zookeepers say the lockdown didn't change the animals' habits, but workers did miss the visitors. <laughs> wow, 62. That's, That's pretty wild. awesome. Very cool. Well, with the Tokyo Olympics, Olympics postponed until 2021 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Athletes, they have to find new ways to stay in shape. Argentine wild water canoeing slalom racer Sebastian Rossi chose training in his girlfriend's swimming pool to keep his canoes strapped to a pair of palm trees here while he paddles vigorously in the water. It's not the same as being in the wild, but Rossi says, hey, this is better than nothing. <laughs> I may need a canoe tonight if it rains as much as Todd is talking uh -oh. about. Yeah. Wow. A shout out this morning to the Indianapolis Urban League, its leader, Tony Mason, the entire team, including their volunteers. For the past seven weeks, the organization has been holding weekly food drives to help people impacted by COVID-19. In that time, Lauren and Meredith, they have fed more than 10,000 adults and children. Today, they're hosting another food drive. And Todd, I'm hoping their food drive will be dry as, of course, we're expecting some storms later this afternoon. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty small window of storms later on this afternoon, and they're going to be scattered in nature. It's not that everybody's going to see them, so you definitely need to be weather aware if you do have events outside this afternoon or this evening. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily cancel them. You'll have to batten down uh, the hatch and tie some tents down if you do have those set up. In fact, I'd probably advise you not to set those tents up as the wind picks up here throughout the day. It's all part of the storm system that you see there. We'll deal with the outer bands of the storm coming through. The wind will pick up here throughout the morning hours. It'll be gusty this afternoon as some of these isolated storms make their way through the area. And unfortunately, as these storms do go through, there will be the potential of a few isolated tornadoes. Meredith. Todd, thanks. A lot of people are cutting the cord and switching to streaming services to save cash. But if you're not careful, the price streaming apps can add up quickly. Working for you, John Mattery shows us how you can get several free streaming apps so you don't waste your money. HBO Max is the latest streaming service to want you to pay for streaming movies. In their case, $15 a month, twice what Disney charges. But the good news is there are still some streaming services that are free. Cutting the cord is not the price break it used to be. Start with that $50 internet package, add Netflix, HBO Go, and other services, and suddenly you're paying almost 100 bucks again. But CNET says you can stream thousands of movies at no charge, and we're not talking about illegal file sharing services. The best free movie streaming services include Sony's Crackle, with a rotating list of 200 classic movies, Free Dive, Amazon's ad-supported version of Amazon Prime movies, Hoopla, a library partnership that lets you rent movies free with your library card, and Walmart's Voodoo with hundreds of free movies, many from the 80s and 90s. The one downside of most free streaming services, commercials, but you're not paying for it, so if you can deal with that, you don't waste your money. I'm John Batteries. Good morning, Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. 
Now on Good Morning Indiana, on this Tuesday morning, here's a look at your 630 News Feed. A woman is dead after a shooting on Indy's northwest side. This happened around 1230 this morning at a home on West 33rd Street near I-65. Police found the victim inside and pronounced her dead at the scene. Officers tell us they've taken a man into custody as a suspect. Investigators believe this shooting stemmed from a domestic incident. There are now only nine living survivors from the sinking of the USS Indianapolis during World War II. The USS Indianapolis Survivors Group says that Jim Jarvis died on Sunday at the age of 98. Jarvis was the oldest living member of the 316 sailors who survived the 1945 sinking of the Navy cruiser. The Survivors Group also announced it was canceling this year's USS Indianapolis reunion because of the COVID-19 pandemic. As for the pandemic, the State Department of Health is reporting 14 new deaths related to COVID-19. That means more than 2,100 Hoosiers have lost their lives to the virus. 244 new cases were also reported on Monday, bringing the state's total to 37,623. The state will update those numbers at noon today. Starting next week, IU Health will ease temporary visitor restrictions at all hospitals, and that means one visitor per patient per day in the inpatient areas. Each visitor will be screened and given a mask, which must be worn at all times inside the hospital. Visitors also must be at least 18 years old. Patients who have tested positive for COVID-19 will not be allowed visitors. The IMAX Theater at White River State Park is expected to reopen in late June. The park made the announcement on Monday, about three months after the big screen theater shut down over COVID-19 restrictions. The park's trails and the canal have remained open, and the Frank Lloyd Visitor Center will reopen this Thursday, June the 11th. Good morning to you on this Tuesday. If you look outside, it looks beautiful, but snap your fingers. This is Indiana. Things will change in a flash. Yeah, that's right, Raphael. And the good news is for anybody heading out on the roads, your morning commute is pretty smooth so far. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But when you're headed home this evening, things may look a little different, Todd. Yeah, you know, we're kind of going to ramp up the threat of severe weather as we get into the afternoon hours. So you're all exactly right. This morning, there's really not a whole lot going on, whether it's a, a a walk or a jog or a bike ride or you do have to head into work you're just fine for your morning commute it's really this afternoon that we run into issues a couple things you'll notice throughout the morning hours the wind will start to pick up as the morning progresses and by this afternoon the winds will be gusty it's warm and muggy throughout the day and that's going to set the stage for some of these tropical like downpours to come through which will be brief so we're not worried about flooding but within these downpours there will be the chance of a few isolated tornadoes making their way through the area today Day. So it's definitely a day you need to be weather aware. It's a day you probably should download the Storm Shield app if you don't have it already to alert you to any watches or warnings if they're issued. The rainfall that we'll be dealing with is actually down in Tennessee. It's this band of rain that's going to lift to the north, which you see off to our west. That is going to stay to our west as the storm system essentially makes its way off to the north, uh, just to the west of Chicago. But the Storm Prediction Center does have us under the slight risk for severe weather. Again, all forms of severe weather on the table here with the wind, a threat of tornado. It could be some small hail. It's probably the lower of the threat of the three, uh, but we'll talk about it in more detail for you coming up in just a few minutes, Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you. This is a look right now at traffic as you're heading out on the roads. Again, it's dry, sunny right now for your commute. You can see I-465 and East 71st Street here. Everything's picking up northbound and southbound. Traveling up to speed, but we'll let you know if there are any crashes or delays around your area. Right now, everything is pretty quiet. This morning, Metro Police are investigating an incident during a Monday night protest protest that was on Monument Circle. Uh, Lauren, several protesters were struck by a minivan as they gathered for an 11th stray day. Here's how one witness described the situation in downtown Indianapolis. Two other cars were coming down the circle, um, a blue Chevy and then also a gray Equinox. While the blue Chevy slowed down and attempted to listen, the gray Equinox sped up and ran through the crowd, uh, sending protesters spilling over the hood. We did reach out to Metro Police and here's what they're telling us. Around 8.15 last night, a van was driving on the circle and police were told protesters might have thrown something or beat on the car, breaking a window or two. Now, video of the incident does not show that. No injuries were reported. Police tell us the driver is cooperating and two people are being questioned. IMPD also says there were no arrests for curfew violations 
over the weekend. But formal criminal charges have been filed against five more people after clashes with police during protests two weeks ago. Meredith Gable is accused of defacing the soldiers and sailors monument after it had been cleaned of graffiti. Jillian Huff is accused of nearly striking an officer with her car. Zachary Kelly, Jamie Bundy and Randall Whited are all charged with resisting law enforcement. Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears has said he will not file criminal charges against 41 non-violent protesters who were previously arrested. Meredith? Protesters in Indianapolis and across the country are calling on cities to defund the police, but that phrase may not mean what you think. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with more on what defunding police would look like. Alyssa. Good morning, Meredith. And we spoke with an expert about what this defunding the police actually means. And those calls across the country is really more of a call for not defunding completely, but rather reallocating those funds into other program, cutting the budgets within police departments and putting that money elsewhere to help people within cities. Now, activists in favor of the idea want that money to go towards mental health services, housing and education, and expanding community med mediation programs. Last weekend, a majority of Minneapolis's city council members agreed they would defund the city's police department. Specific details have not come out on what that would look like. This is about imagining what a public safety effort looks like that's community led. Here in Indianapolis, City County Councilor Allie Brown told RTV6 she'd received close to 400 emails just this week about defunding the Indianapolis Metro Police Department. The City County Council did send a statement to RTV6 about the issue and they said they would be looking at their annual budget starting in August and they would be looking at public safety spending in public hearings starting at the same time. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, the time right now is 6.36. The city is talking about more revisions to its current use of force policy for police. So last week, Mayor Joe Hogg said announced that an update to the policy is being drafted. And for the first time, the policy will be reviewed by citizens. That's just one of the changes made following the nearly two weeks of protests against police brutality and the deaths of George Floyd, Dre John Reed, and others that have rocked the city. The mayor says the updated policy will be based on a model from California. Not only long overdue, but uh, frankly are in keeping with uh, standard best practices uh, in other communities throughout uh, the country. Not everyone is satisfied with the proposed changes. However, the African American Coalition of Indianapolis is calling for more civilian oversight and transparency. They're also calling for a civilian majority on the use of force review board to ensure accountability. The mayor says he is open to those requests in the future, but he feels like the changes they're making right now are significant. We do have a complete draft of the updated use of force policy right now. You can find it on the RTV6 News app. The IMPD General Orders Committee is expected to vote on this proposal this week. IMPD is scheduled to begin training officers on the new policy on July 6th. Lauren, the time now is 6.37 here on Good Morning Indiana, and the City County Council is also making a declaration this morning against racism. Last night, the council unanimously agreed to declare racism a public health crisis in the city. The proposal calls for a review of city policies to eliminate what they call implicit and explicit racial bias. Uh, public health officials say African Americans have less access to quality health care, healthy food choices, and mental health services. Mayor Joe Hogsett said Monday these disparities have been highlighted during the COVID-19 pandemic. A Confederate monument is no longer on display in a public Indianapolis park. On Monday, crews dismantled the statue at Garfield Park days after Mayor Joe Hanks had announced it would be removed. The memorial was moved to the park from Greenlawn Cemetery in 1928 because public officials who were active in the KKK wanted to make it more visible. In a statement last week, the mayor called the monument a painful reminder of our state's horrific embrace of the Klan a century ago. A small group of people gathered at the park to watch the monument be taken down. For all of the veterans that have sat silent on this, shame on you. That is pitiful. So, I've talked to a veteran and says, well, well, they were traitors. This isn't about 
who they were. This is about Indiana's history and part in the Civil War. I know it's a, an emotional moment for everybody, but we just have to think about what's going on in our nation and our city. And um, just, this is what our neighborhood wants. This is what the Neighborhood Association wants. This is what they voted, and I'm in full support of that. The mayor's office says the Indianapolis local public improvement bond bank funded the removal of the monument. For now, it is being kept in a city storage facility. Well, they help thousands of kids with clothes and school supplies each year, but now they need a new building. We're going to show you what's next for this nonprofit and how you can help them out. The time is 639. Stick around. We'll be right back after this break. Keller and Keller. Right now. Welcome back. Well, when it comes to reopening the state from COVID-19 related shutdowns, stage four of Governor Eric Holcomb's plan is actually projected to start on Sunday. So under this new phase, the bars and clubs can open at 50% capacity. Movie theaters, bowling alleys, and similar facilities can also open at 50%. Cultural entertainment and tourism sites like museums and zoos, those can reopen. The capacity is not determined yet. And casinos, they'll be allowed to be reopened with the approval of the Indiana Gaming Commission. Now, this is all subject to change. And a reminder, Marion County has been behind in advancing to different phases compared to the rest of the state. A nonprofit group that helps thousands of Hoosier kids needs your help. Through no fault of their own, they're running out of space. So here's a call to action. The Indianapolis Assistant League says it could no longer operate in its current building. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us this morning with details on how you can help. Kelsey, good the Assistance League of Indianapolis serves more than 3,500 kids every single year, giving them hygiene kits, clothes, shoes, and coats. But now they need a new space to live, and they're asking for your help. We just love these kids. We want to make a difference in their lives. Through their program, Operation School Bell, the Assistance League of Indianapolis helps to make thousands of kids feel confident at school. But we provide um, necessary uh, school clothing for the children so that they can be at school learning instead of being sent home because they don't have uh, the required clothing. They're getting books, they're getting hygiene uh, uh, Ziploc bags that contain shampoo, bar soap, deodorant. The kids aren't just getting a bag of clothes, they are getting a one-on-one -on -one shopping experience with volunteers. They have choices. It's not the same merchandise. There's lots of different colors here that you can see and uh, it is their choice that they make, which is very empowering for those children. ALI has been serving kids in Indy for 36 years. For more than 30 years, they operated out of the old Coca-Cola building and then at Forest Manor Professional Development Center. Now, they find themselves having to move once again. And the building has sold uh, to another nonprofit. And unfortunately, there's not enough room here for us to deliver our programs as we have in the past. The new owner of the building did offer the ALI a space in the building, but they say it's just not big enough for all of their programs. On top of all of the children they serve, they also serve the elderly and assault survivors. All of their programs would be housed in their new location. We need a new place to live and we would really like to be there like forever. They are looking for approximately 12 to 15,000 square feet of space to operate in. If you know of a place like that that they can utilize, head over to theindychannel.com for information on how to reach them. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. And to make the donuts, Dunkin' Donuts are always fresh. I made the donut. Well, if you like to make the donuts, there may be a job opening for you. Next, how the donut chain could be hiring Hoosiers very soon. Uh, I love the time <laughs> to make the donuts. I remember those commercials growing up. Uh, they're great. All right, it's going to be a windy day for us today. Not so much right now, but the wind will pick up and gust about 40 miles per hour at times. To go along with the wind, there will be some thunderstorms that develop this afternoon as well. And it will include the risk for an isolated tornado or two. We'll talk about all these threats for you as we go forward in this forecast on what will become a very active Tuesday for us coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. Personalized dark support fitting at the Goodfeed store. 
Welcome back. Here is a live look at traffic right now at I-465 and Allisonville Road. We do have one stalled vehicle there off in the shoulder of the interstate. Everything moving along eastbound and westbound is traveling up to speed at this early hour. We'll continue to keep our eyes on your roads throughout your Tuesday. Raphael. Wendy's no longer asking, where's the beef? The fast food chain says its beef supply is back to normal. There were some reported beef shortages last month as the coronavirus outbreak temporarily shut down some meat plants. Nearly one out of five Wendy's restaurants was out of beef. And that forced many locations to get creative and shift towards some chicken products. Now, analysts say that Wendy's was more exposed to shortages because it relies on fresh beef more than some of its competitors. Duncan says it will be adding 25,000 jobs as restaurants start to reopen in the U.S. The chain says its franchisees are looking to fill a range of positions, including management roles. Duncan launched an ad campaign on Monday to support recruiting efforts. It's also partnering with Southern New Hampshire University on an online education program for employees. All right, Todd, what is your go-to donut? Oh, jelly. Interesting. With the with the powdered sugar, the okay. white powdered sugar jelly. At least at Dunkin' Donuts, I know now. That, <laughs> now donut shops have all those eclectic and creative yeah, ones. Yeah, so with cereal I, on I, top. I mean, and, to be honest, mm -hmm. I haven't really met too many donuts I haven't <laughs> liked. So. <laughs> all right, outside right now, uh, we're dealing with quiet conditions. I know I've been talking all morning long, and I talked about it yesterday about the wind and the potential for severe weather. It's all still in the forecast. It's just this afternoon and into the evening hours. It's very warm and muggy out there this morning. Those conditions kind of setting the stage for the potential of the severe weather. Wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour in those isolated tornadoes. So here are your hour-by-hour -hour wind speeds uh, breakdown uh, for you. You notice the breeze will start to pick up throughout the morning. It becomes gusty throughout the afternoon. And then even once the storms go through, it is going to remain very windy all the way into the overnight hours before the wind finally starts to subside a little bit throughout the day tomorrow. So the the wind is something that's going to impact everybody, no matter where you are in central Indiana. Some of you under the wind advisory, and you can see those counties scrolling there in the top corner of your screen. But right now we're dealing with a little bit of sunshine, no rain in uh, central Indiana as of yet. And the bulk of this heavy rainfall is going to stay off to our west. The center of circulation just south of St. Louis now. On the western side of the system, that's where you find the heavy rain. Eastern sides of these post-tropical systems, that's where you deal with the banding. And on the eastern side, that's also because of the circulation where you have the potential to get these brief spin-ups within some cells of some isolated tornadoes. So let me walk you through on TrueCast. Once we get to about 1, 2 o'clock, we're expecting some of these storms to start to develop across the area. And it's within these individual cells that will have the potential for a quick tornado. Not one that's going to probably stay on the ground and travel for miles and miles. With this type of setup, it's one that we call them spin-ups. They drop down, then they pop back up. But obviously, if a tornado touches down, it could cause some damage. So you just got to be extra cautious and alert here this afternoon. Severe threat should end by about 7, 8 o'clock. So it's just a small window of opportunity for the threats. The slight risk for much of central Indiana. Wind is that the highest threat it could get, not only for the thunderstorms, but outside the thunderstorms. Uh, low to moderate threat of an isolated tornado. Not too concerned about hail or the potential of flooding. The rain moves through very quickly. It does not linger throughout the day. Another round of storms possible tomorrow as the cold front comes through. Uh, that would be during the afternoon and evening hours once that front is through. Just a great stretch of weather though. Thursday all the way into next week. Lower humidity, cooler temperatures, and plenty of sunshine. Lauren in the forecast. All right, Todd, we're keeping a close eye on traffic for your Tuesday morning. And here's a look south of downtown I-65 and Keystone Avenue, where we have a busy construction zone. This is something we've been monitoring for a few weeks now. The northbound lanes do have to shift twice to the southbound side and then back to the northbound side. So slow down and be aware of those big curves. Southbound side is restricted as well down to just two lanes. The exit ramps and entrance ramps remain open. So use caution as you're merging through that traffic shift. We'll continue to keep you updated if there are any major crashes or delays to impact your commute. But right now, it's pretty smooth sailing. So, Lauren, if someone at random tells you to be excellent to each other, there's a good reason for that today. Coming up, why fans of a classic movie series are celebrating today and why they might be in for a treat just a few hours from now. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6.
RTV6 app on your phone or streaming device. They're traveling through time. How's it going, royal ugly dudes? Put them in the iron lead. Excellent! Execute them. Bogus. All right, Lauren, I think I found our Halloween costume for this year. If you did not know, today is Bill and Ted Day. It is the day every year that fans of the movie series that began with 1989's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure celebrate the two righteous dudes. Well, today, Bill and Ted Day might be extra special for fans. They are, there are reports that the first trailer for what could be the final chapter in the series will be released. Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter are set to star in Bill and Ted Face the Music sometime this summer. <laughs> I'll leave the chat to you guys because this is a little before my time. <laughs> uh, Lauren, I was, oh, I was a newborn in 1989, so <laughs> same, same here. I've never seen these, but yeah. good thing no. we are yeah. still uh, kind of social distancing so we can all go home, well, catch up on the series, the and then a little homework. back together this summer for the third installment, or fourth, or I'm not even sure. The final. Final installment. All yeah. I'm going to say is excellence is how I describe working with all of you. Excellence <laughs> is not the word I would describe Todd's pending forecast. Upon. Yeah. And, and Raphael, I remember when the movie came out, so you, you and I are going to have to like stick together on this one. Yeah. All right, outside we right will. now it is quiet, yeah. but as we go throughout the afternoon hour, storm chances increase. As you see, there will be the potential for severe storms. A few of them could produce an isolated tornado. That rain is down to our south now. Outside of the storms, it becomes very windy as well. All right, Todd, thanks. Thank you for joining us. We're back in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America. And remember, all your news throughout the day can be found on the RTV6 app. We hope you're